Boker Tov, David. Boker Tov, Matthew. Can you tell us, uh, I guess, your name and where you're coming from? Uh, my name is David Martin, and I'm coming from Puerto Rico. I live in an eco community in the mountains where uh, we are focusing on food security and food sustainability. Uh, I've been traveling around the world for about a year now and uh, Puerto Rico is where I'm going to be staying for an uh, indefinite period of time. It's beautiful. And we're here at Haya Lima where we have uh, ayahuasca retreats. Mm. And yes. I believe it's uh, your first time. Yes, this is my first experience with uh, they say sitting with medicine. I've learned a lot of things about myself and uh, yeah, one of the most the most profound spiritual experience of my life i wouldn't consider myself a spiritual person until a few days ago um, but i'm very happy uh, to feel this connection to uh, spirit to to the spirit uh, that i found here at this wonderful retreat can you can you describe that ceremonial experience and how it was for you um, I will do the best I can to explain it in words. Uh, it's more of a feeling and an experience to be, uh, re to remember, I would, get, I would say, to remember the most important things, the blessings of water, the blessings of light, the uh, closeness, uh, the oneness of humanity, the uh, connection that we can all feel instantaneously. Uh, the vulnerability uh, of being in front of a group and sharing some of the strongest emotions uh, that you've ever uh, felt before. Um, the medicine uh, really helps you to uh, connect, to feel alive, to feel happy, to feel love again. Um, there's so many things that uh, I didn't know that were missing. Um, now I uh, believe that I'm paying attention a lot more to those things and I, I, uh, that was through the help of you and this community and the, the medicine men, the medicine women, the knowledge in this place, the, the mountain, the environment, the river, the, uh, every blade of grass, every breath of air. It's beautiful. And David, can you speak a little bit about your past, like where you're coming from? Yes, um, I have a very colorful background. I was born in Israel in uh, 1979, uh, March 26th. It was the same day that a peace treaty was uh, signed with Egypt. Uh, and the uh, funny story is every boy that was born in Israel that day was named Shalom. I was the only boy, boy named David. I was named after my grandfather, um, but it was an important day. Uh, I left at a very young age. I left at three years old to Alaska of all the places, uh, pretty much the opposite end of the world. I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska until I was 18 years old. And I wanted to reconnect with Israel and my, uh, my roots, my family. And I moved to Israel when I was 18. Yeah served in the Israeli army from 2000 to 2002 during a period of great conflict. It was uh, the Intifada uh, and I was, uh, I was in the fire of war. Uh, I missed, I made it through, thank, thank the gods, thank the creator. Uh, I, I, I made it through a very scary time and uh, I, I left shortly after my military service. I went back to Alaska. I felt like uh, um, I, I didn't want to be around that kind of tension and that type of conflict. Um, so I packed my things. I went back to Alaska. Uh, uh, there's a lot of details in between, but uh, I, uh, I en ended up meeting uh, a special woman, a mother to my son Solomon. Uh, he came into my life in 2004. Uh, that was uh, the, one of the pivotal moments in my life where you know things are going to change. Uh, Solomon came around in 2004, but we lived in Alaska. Uh, I joined the U.S. Navy in 2007. 
I was uh, looking for an option for health care to support my family. Uh, so I knew that the military would fix those things uh, right away. Uh, we know there's flaws in the system, that, that education and health care aren't something that's provided very easily. So I decided to join the Navy in 2007 and uh, I was stationed on a destroyer um, in Norfolk, Virginia. And I did four years on that destroyer. Uh, my son had two birthdays on the ship because I couldn't leave. I spent years and years, probably about three years out to sea, being deployed, coming back. This was the war on terrorism. And um, I decided after four years, that was enough. Uh, they try to convince you that there's no other options to uh, raise your family, but I knew there was other options. So I left uh, the US Navy in 2011 and uh, I, uh, uh, I started an e my education through the GI Bill. Um, I really enjoyed learning. I had always doubted my ability to learn my knowledge, uh, my smartness, but uh, it turned out that I was very good at school and I loved education. And after a year of studying, I was hired to help veterans with their education benefits through the Minnesota Department of Veteran Affairs. So I had moved to Minnesota for, uh, that is where Solomon's mother was from. And I had um, helped veterans for 10 years. And I started to uh, look for our ways to help vet veterans besides traditional uh, VA methods. Uh, I found uh, exercise therapy to be very helpful, but I also started learning about these uh, alternative therapies of psilocybin and uh, um, uh, spiritual healing. Uh, I was, uh, I was can, very curious. Yeah, can I, can I ask, did you have any, uh, any PTS that I, you were uh, diagnosed with? I, I went to the VA and I had claimed PTS. I had been in war and I had seen casualties. Uh, I, I, I was struggling. Uh, the VA determined that I did not have PTS and that the trauma had come from the Israeli army and not from the U.S. Navy, so they refused my claim. Um, I was uh, uh, discouraged uh, that uh, the very people that I was working for would be very uh, not very open about trauma and I noticed that um, the people, the, my clients, my veterans, uh, my brothers and sisters were being uh, doused with med medication that were not allowing them to express their, their, their feelings. Um, and uh, I was in search of something that, 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 that would work better. And, um, and this was your first experience with Plant medicine, ayahuasca. ayahuasca to to sit in a ceremony with medicine men, medicine women. Yes, uh, I had uh, used psilocybin uh, mushrooms uh, about eight years before and had a good experience with another veteran, a very good friend of mine who had served through hell, and uh, he was very hard to reach. But uh, with with the psilocybin, uh, he let his walls down, and for a few hours he could we could connect and feel uh, at home together. Um, so I knew there, there was that feeling, uh, but I hadn't, I hadn't considered uh, ayahuasca and spiritual healing and to come to a place where the ceremony and the training had come from years and years and years, th hundreds of years of practice and uh, the difference is, is amazing uh, than uh, self-medicating to do that with uh, trained professional uh, shamans. I, 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 I can't tell you how important, I can't put into words how important it has been this last few days to feel that. And it's not only the shamans, it's the environment that it creates around us, the vulnerability to cry in front of a group full of strangers to feel safe uh, in this environment, it's, uh, it, it, it's 
it, it changes things. It's, it's a game changer. And I'm uh, super happy to be here. I'm super happy to spread the word of these uh, experiences that can, that can heal us all. Not just uh, veterans, not just people with PTS. I think this, this is a magic that can be spread to everyone, uh, no matter what the situation. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Shalom. Aho. Aho. Aho.